Today I want to have an in-depth look into the image processing pipeline for Fusion in Resolve. That means I want to look in more depth in how Fusion exactly interacts between the edit and the color page of Resolve, how you can use multiple media in and multiple media out nodes, uh, how you can reverse the order, do some color processing before you use Fusion and so on. So I'm looking at a few of these more advanced tricks. Um, I will start, however, with a very quick review of the different options how you can uh, go into Fusion. You may be familiar with some of this if you have been using Fusion in Resolve and then um, we will look at some of these more detailed concepts. Before I start, I want to give a quick shout out to Eric Westphal, also known as Sir Edric. Last week I mentioned a little trick to quickly access the Fusion settings. Eric showed this in a train the trainer seminar that I attended. So thanks to Eric for sharing this little trick and my sincere apologies for not mentioning your name in last week's tutorial. So thank you Eric and now to this week's tutorial. My timeline here outlines the different ways how I can go over to Fusion. The first option here, Fusion Composition, is just the Fusion effect from the effects library, effects Fusion Composition, and you would use this if you are creating something completely from scratch, like some motion graphics or titles or so. So if I go over to Fusion, then I see only one media out note here. Of course, I can still bring in things from the media library, for example, like this dust clip, I can still bring them in and they appear as media in clips. These media in clips, um, you can't really change anything in there. They still show the clip name up here. Uh, they show some media ID, which just means they are linked to a certain object in Resolve's database, uh, which is now here inside this um, media pool accessible in the project. Um, so this is the way these media nodes work. And then you can create your motion graphic or whatever it is from scratch. I will just very quickly create a title just in 30 seconds or so. And probably I spare you even the 30 seconds and accelerate it. Okay, so here it is, my awesome, never before seen uh, fusion title effect. I'm sure 20 years ago I would have impressed someone. Enough for the illustration, so if you start from scratch, just the fusion clip here is enough. In the edit page I can see the result again, and I can do further manipulations both on the edit page and in the color page. Of course I can at any time uh, change the clip length and then um, It'll just truncate whatever happened in Fusion. I recommend doing this sparingly because in Fusion you might have animations set up and so on and they might move um, to parts outside of uh, the final truncated clip. So it's a bit more difficult to um, find them in Fusion and you might have more difficulty navigating through keyframes if you do a lot of changes in the edit after you were uh, in Fusion. But it's technically still possible. Um, so the edit is one point. Another point is that you can of course do uh, these kind of transformations afterwards, the edit transformations and then the color effects. To do the color effects let me actually go to a real clip. Let me go to this clip. So that's the second option to go to Fusion. I can go of course to Fusion from a clip. In this case my media in is already there, my media out as well. Uh, let me do, uh, let's increase the fog. I just add a fast noise here um, over it and add some additional fog here. Okay, I think I just leave the default without even animating it. I'm a bit lazy, but you see the result is directly back on the edit page. So I have my fusion effect on top. I can disable it here together with the color effects. Um, now I don't have color effects. Otherwise, via right click, you can also uh, see only color effects or only fusion effects. Um, now the order of things was now fusion, then any edit effects that I do on the edit page and then color effects. Let me demonstrate this. So fusion effect is added. Now I go into the edit page and let's say I do a resizing effect in the edit page. So these resizing effects happen after fusion. So I have added my additional fork. So just as a Reminder, additional fork added. I can resize now here and remember the size if I go to the color page, you see that it is now in the color page already the resized version of the clip. And now I can do um, whatever stupid color correction I want to do. Now this is obviously not realistic but just for demonstration. 
and I go back into the edit page and on the edit page you see now fusion and color effect together and even the resize effect together so even that I can um, still control uh, from the edit page. This is the general flow of things. You can use adjustment clips with Fusion. So the point of this would be if you have um, multiple clips and you are going for a certain effect across multiple clips, um, either a certain look that you are developing in Fusion, some filter, um, you could also use it for certain overlays like a logo overlay or a lower third overlay. Although overlays you could also use with a simple um, fusion composition and just keep the background transparent. So I can overlay this and it will become black but if I keep the background transparent I can use it like for logos and stuff like this. Um, with the adjustment clip the difference to the fusion clip is that with this I get a media in again. And in this case if I go to fusion I get a media in from both the clips that are lying under Underneath. So I now have here my fusion timeline and you see the first clip which I already color graded and then here the second clip uh, is coming here. And the point is not that the first clip was color graded, the point is just that I have a media in which is taking whatever is under the adjustment clip. So if you want to layer something on top, whatever you have done before underneath, including color correction, including resizing, including everything, um, then you can use this adjust adjustment clip and it will go across clip boundaries forever how long that clip is. And you can use this now for any global kind of effect. Um, let's just quickly, I don't know, what do we want to do? Let's add a filter. Yeah, wonderful. Let's use this uh, Sobel filter that's perfect and maybe give the whole thing a black background just to make it obvious what's happening. Back to the edit page. Wow, what a great effect. I think this should be in every music video out there. So this is how you can use the adjustment uh, layer. And now of course I can uh, ch still change this, shorten it, lengthen it and so on. Again, have to pay attention if I use keyframe animation in Fusion, I have to pay attention and it'll get a bit tricky. but. In general, uh, this is what you can do. The adjustment clip is kind of special because it's taking whatever is taking at the timeline and you don't have to decide this at the time when you're creating your fusion comp. Um, however, you can only access one layer of the timeline underneath no matter what you um, build otherwise. So it's not very good, for example, if you want to build transitions because you cannot, uh, you can access the layer underneath but if you want to mix clips together or so, uh, it won't really help you. For that you can build a fusion comp from scratch and let's do that here. Maybe not for a transition but for to add some clouds to the, the clip underneath. So let's have a look at the clip. So this is the original. I'm adding some clouds on top and if I want to I can position the clouds already. Let's, uh, let's do that. Let's move them a little bit up like, uh, like this and perhaps enlarge a bit. Then obviously I want to mask something here. So what I can do is I can select both clips together, click new fusion clip and this way I'm directly jumping into a kind of compound clip uh, where I can use both clips now in fusion. Now this clip again encapsulates whatever effects were done before, similar to a compound clip. So if I have done color corrections or if I have done resizing effects of the edit page, I'm going directly to Fusion with those effects encapsulated into this new compound clip um, or in this case it's called Fusion Clip but it works very similar. The difference is if I go into Fusion from here I have the layers already automatically combined into um, two layers on top, uh, two media in nodes which are already merged together. Um, I always change the foreground background because I like it find it more understandable this way. But I have my two layers and now in my media in node I can even select these layers. So if I look at media in one I have layer zero, I have layer one. So these are the two layers from the timeline here. They are merged together. Now let me very quickly mask the merge based on the horizon very roughly. Oops, too high like this. I just mask off the horizon and mask that in the merge and that was the opposite invert, give it a bit of a soft edge maybe um, to put the clouds in. Perhaps I want to screen the clouds so let me do this. This is starting to look a bit better. Um, and now maybe I find out that whatever I did on the edit page before moving the clouds up was maybe not so good because these clouds look a bit strange and cut off here. So let me go back to the edit page. 
I can in the edit page now I can do a right click on my clip and can say open in timeline and similar to a compound clip it will go into a separate timeline where these two clips are uh, layered the way they were layered before I created the fusion clip and here I have again the full control over the original clips. So if I decided that this um, edit size transformation here, this um, moving up the clouds, that was a stupid idea. I can go back into the inspector, um, undo the transform or move it back. Same if I've done color corrections, I can on individual clip level can undo the color corrections or, or change the color corrections. Whenever I'm done, I close the clip, go back to my timeline and then if I now go back into Fusion, I actually see the result directly applied. So I have again my full cloud image uh, without the cutoff uh, moving up that I had before. So I have the more pleasant cloud image that I probably should be using for this kind of sky replacement here. Now let me go back to the edit page one more time just to review to see that everything was combined here. So this Fusion Clip 3 uh, which I have in the edit timeline now behaves like any other clip here. So I can again do uh, edit page transformations or I can do color corrections from the color page on top of this clip uh, including the Fusion effect that uh, I just created for, for this um, a simple rudimentary sky replacement here. Now these were the different options how you bring stuff to Fusion. When you're bringing stuff back from Fusion you have of course always the media out node um, which is sending the information to the color page but you can actually send more than one media out to the color page. You can send multiple signals if you want or multiple sources to the color page. Let me have a look at the color page. So on the color page you have here these um, the input, the source for the color page and the output for the color page and in between your node graph if you're doing color work. Now if I want I can add here an additional source or even multiple additional sources uh, which can be used on the color page and these sources correspond to multiple media outs on the fusion page. So let me go to the fusion page for this comp. Here on the Fusion page right now I just have one media out. Let me add a second one, media out. And perhaps even a third one just for demonstration. And most commonly uh, what you might do is add masks to the color page. So if you have done some uh, complicated rotoscoping or so on the Fusion page and you want to reuse the same mask on the color page um, or if you have specifically built something for uh, color grading later then you can use that mask and attach it to a media out like this. So I'm just attaching my mask to the second media out. Um, in theory you can even add images here and uh, do some work in Fusion and then do compositing on the color page. In principle it's possible, I don't think it's very common, but just to demonstrate let me add some, um, let me just add some test image. I just, I just add some plasma for no particular reason other than um, to get a different image. So now I have my media out 1 which is the image I'm actually interested in, my media out 2 which is the mask that I created and my media out 3 just a test image and let's go over to the color page just to, to see the input. Uh, so when I connect the second one here you see my, my mask. Oh, I, I wasn't careful here, this was not intentional but doesn't really matter. So this was the mask that came from Fusion and if I add uh, this I get the, uh, there's some, some problem with the transparency, I guess this wasn't really a realistic example but um, I get my, my crazy image here from the media out number three. So what I probably want to do with this is the most a realistic use case I would say is to take the mask that I created in Fusion, attach it to the mask input and if you have it here I have the, the highlight viewer here enabled to, to see the mask. Um, so this way I see the mask including its softness here. You see the symbol here that a mask is attached via the mask channel and so I could use this directly to um, you know do some form of color correction on my mask image and no I don't want to make the sky purple but you know, just for demonstrating that my mask is actually working here in this area. I can um, attach it like this. Okay, this was my fast round trip in the Resolve Fusion image pipeline. You can send 
different signals into Fusion, get multiple outputs from Fusion to the color page, uh, do color correction first, do Fusion first. You know, you have a lot of flexibility uh, within this uh, construct. So I hope there was something new for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, let me know. If you have any questions, also let me know. And otherwise, thanks for watching. My name is Bernd. See you next time.